Hello everybody, welcome back to Throttle Grotto. This time we're going to start working on the 928 project. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright everybody, so this is the start of the 928 project. I've been doing some work on it here and there. I've taken some panels out to the body shop to have them gone over and put in the primer. Uh, but, like, this is the actual start of work on the 928. The reason is, the rabbit is not making any progress. I'm still having some issues with wiring. Um, I've got some people helping me try to figure it out, but until I get a solution as to why it won't start, I'm not working on the rabbit. So, <laughs> so let me give you an overview of what I've done already and what needs to be done at this stage in the project. You can see here I've already got the fenders pulled off and they're mostly sanded. Um, you can see here where the previous owner had the body shop do the filling of the... Um, the side marker lights so this will have to be professionally done <laughs> I mean it's already sort of professionally done but it needs to be like contoured properly with filler and if you haven't seen what a bare engine compartment on a 928 looks like this is it it's massive um, let me get a tape measure just so you can get an idea of how deep this engine bay really is all right, so if I go, I'm just going to go from the edge of that rain tray there to where the radiator would bump up against. That's <laughs> four feet, nine inches. That's, or three feet, nine inches, almost four feet. Um, <laughs> to the front of the car, you'd be looking at, yeah, more a lot more than that. And the width almost three feet wide it's just under three feet wide at the uh, at at the at the uh, edges of the firewall there or the core support no not the core support whatever you call that thing <laughs> inner fender well yeah so for those of you just tuning in this is a five-speed car I've already removed the spaghetti farm up in the corner where the brake booster, master cylinder, all that stuff lived. Um, now, I'm not going to p remove this piece here because I feel like if I remove this, this rubber, it's like a rubber coat, like a flexible rubber cover. You can kind of see here. It's sort of thick, but I think if I remove this, I'm either going to have to purchase a new one or I'm never going to get it back on. So under here is going to be silver for whoever decides to dismantle this car in the future. Um, so the nice thing is that means I can leave all these wiring harnesses intact. I don't have to actually pull them away from the fuse box. We can basically bundle and tape them up in the center here and they will be out of the way and give you a better idea of the the bundle of wires that lives over in that corner. And then we've got fuel lines, uh, stuff that goes to the EVAP canister. Um, so the first step I'm going to do with this is I am just going to scrub this thing down with a wire brush and some some lacquer thinner and see how see how it looks. Because I feel like if we do that, we're probably going to get to where we can probably just paint over the silver that's in here and not have to like strip this thing down to bare metal. Okay, so after a few minutes with some lacquer, I was trying to figure out why things in the front of the car were red. And I wasn't thinking at all, because uh, after a little bit closer inspection, uh, it looks like this car was in an accident of some kind along the way. And you can see here, there's a seam, right? It goes right up through here on both sides. See where they just cut the firewall. It actually looks like they did a fairly decent repair. 
and it went through this bumper support. Looks like they didn't do a very good job of tacking that back onto the uh, onto the fender well there. Finally called it by the right thing. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like a fairly good repair. Doesn't look like it got into this structure. It looks like it was all upper, up above that. Looks like they tried to do a pretty good job of fixing it. Um, so I think in the event of that, where I have crappy paint stuck on top of what is probably decent factory paint, I think I'm just going to use some paint stripper and go through and do this in little sections and just strip it back to bare metal or whatever, however far down I get it, um, just to make it an easier process on myself. So apparently paint stripper made things a lot worse. Uh, so I'm going to have to come up with a better way to do this and uh, make it both time efficient and effective. Um, unfortunately, paint stripper might be the best way, but it doesn't seem like a very good way in a stuck in a garage when it's raining outside and don't really have any way to transport this vehicle. <laughs> because it's in primer and I don't want it to get wet. All right, everybody, so I moved the Porsche outside so that I could work on it a little bit easier and keep the shop a little bit cleaner. Um, what I ended up using was one of these guys with a various number of different tips on it. Um, and uh, yeah, I got a lot of this taken down to bare metal I figured it'd be better to go as much bare metal as I could get to um, and then I'll hit the rest of it with just a piece of sandpaper real quick um, I'll probably do the one side in primer today um, maybe get the upper half of the core here in uh, primer um, and as you can see there's a lot of things to tape off and move and um, like I have to undo that bracket and it looks like it kind of pivots out of the way there to uh, or yeah Yeah, that looks like a two-piece bracket there. I can take these out of the way to get a little paint behind him um, All right, so the engine compartment is in primer <laughs> um, I will admit that I'm doing kind of a quick job on this I'm not trying to make this a concourse car um, I'm just trying to make sure that the engine compartment looks decent before I put an engine in it uh, so I took some shortcuts I didn't pull the wiring harness I didn't pull the fuel lines I ended up not pulling the struts out because I jacked the car up and the struts stayed in so I was like I'm not gonna do that um, I didn't mask stuff like the subframe. I just tried to keep overspray off of it. So there's going to be some errors in this paint. You know, if you're looking for a concourse restoration, this isn't going to be the one to watch. Um, and, uh, but, you know, for uh, a couple of days' work, uh, this is going to work out pretty good. So for those of you wondering about the repair that was done previously, uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It looks like it was done fairly well. Um, there's still a little bit of seam sealer left on the parts that don't match up quite perfectly. I just took a little hammer and dolly and just knocked the that little piece back down so it's more flush. And uh, I'm really not going to worry about it. <laughs> I could go way down the rabbit hole with this restoration. Um, but I kind of want this car to be just a driver and something I don't have to worry about too much. So there we go. So I think I'm going to mix up some paint and uh, put on some paint spray and music and uh, make this thing uh, 
make this thing look pretty nice underneath here. I think you guys are going to be really impressed with the color. All right, everybody. So here is the first look at Minerva Blue Metallic. Um, kind of see it in the sun there a little bit. I don't want to roll the car back any further because i got to push it in myself. <laughs> um, so I had a couple of little things here. I had a run right there. And I had a run just inside the fender well there. But all in all, the paint went on really nicely. I'm <laughs> really pleased at how, how well this turned out for a quick driveway job. Um, this is... Uh, this is looking a thousand percent better than it did. I've got a few things that I want to do on the firewall just to clean things up before I hang the engine. And there's actually there's actually some things that I need to do before the engine can go back in. So <laughs> the engine that came with the car is here in pieces. And you might be asking yourself, why is it in pieces? Well... <laughs> We'll talk about that next time. Alright, so for those of you that haven't watched the channel very long, this is the paint gun I used. It's the Eastwood Concourse LT. It's actually made to use with a very low CFM uh, compressor, like the tiny little one I have, which only does... It's This one's like a typical 4 CFM at 90 PSI, which is pretty low. Um, 20 gallons. It runs almost constantly when I'm painting, but it puts out enough air to run my small paint gun. So this is probably one of my favorite tools just because it works so well with the stuff I have on hand. All right, so I'm tired. <laughs> this was a lot of work to do in just a few short days. Uh, so I'm really happy with how, with how this turned out. I'm sorry for those of you that are concourse people that really, uh, really want to see everything perfect. This car is not going to be perfect, uh, but I'm going to try to do my best at putting this car together, make it mechanically sound, make the exterior of it look really nice, and uh, not trying to take shortcuts. I'm just trying to like save time and money where I can, and engine compartment stuff like under the fenders and stuff like that. The stuff that people really aren't going to see, uh, so I don't mind saving a little bit of money here and there, and most importantly saving a lot of time, because I have a very short window of summer, I want to get this whole car painted, um, and there's still a lot of stuff to do, I need to do the jams, I need to do inside the hatch, um, <laughs> so um, all of those are going to take a few days each, you know, to prep and paint and all that kind of stuff. So. Very short window of summer here in the Northwest. But all in all, great progress. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, thank you for checking it out. Hope you subscribe. And until next time, get out there and work on something.